back to New World next week. I'm James Corbett of CorbettReport.com. And I'm James Evan Pilato for MediaMonarchy.com. Mainstream News commits professional suicide. We've got that massive story plus more DNA databasing. But first, FDA asks old people to stop infusing children's blood to prevent aging. The FDA has warned old people to stop infusing plasma from young people in order to slow down the aging process, saying it has no proven clinical benefit. In a safety alert, the agency suggested that old people are getting scammed with $8,000 per liter of plasma to treat age-related issues, including dementia, Parkinson's, Alzheimer's, and heart disease. Most of those things avoidable with a good diet and exercise, but let's not worry about that right now. There is no proven clinical benefit of infusion of plasma from young donors to cure, mitigate, treat, or prevent these conditions, and there are risks associated with the use of any plasma product, reads a statement from FDA Commissioner Scott Gottlieb and Peter Marks, who leads the agency's Biologics Center. The idea of infusing young blood to fight aging has attracted technology entrepreneurs like billionaire Bilderberger Peter Thiel, always making appearances here on Neural Next Week, and it was even lampooned in a 2017 episode of HBO's Silicon Valley because reality pretty much outpaces satire now in mainstream conspiracy culture. The reported uses of these products should not be assumed to be safe or effective. We strongly discourage consumers from pursuing this therapy outside of clinical trials under appropriate institutional review board and regulatory oversight. James, you know, it's funny. I tried every tincture and poultice and tonic and patent medicine there is, and all I really needed was the blood of a young boy. Simpsons kind of call it yet again, James. Can we go ahead and kind of add this to the list of crazy conspiracy theories that turned out to be true? Yeah, or just old folklore, I guess, that turned out to be true. I mean, how old are the stories of the secret elite drinking blood in blood rituals or whatever? That goes way back. But uh, I, at least specifically in the context of infusing or or ingesting blood in some manner as a, as a way of uh, prolonging youth and vitality, uh, I've seen that idea specifically with regard to adrenochrome and whatever else for at least a decade. I'm sure it goes back more than that, but anyway. So people have been talking about this, and it's been alleged about a number of people. There's the story of Al Gore being stopped in the airport with a suitcase full of blood, something like that. Supposedly it was in USA Today or something like that, and and then got covered up. I don't know. I can't find any actual original source for that, but if anyone has it, it would be very interesting to see. But anyway, so these stories have been out for decades at this point, um, but here it is. And my mind being my mind, this is just, I would imagine, the old blood stock, you know, the blue bloods, the royal lines, the whatever, finding out, oh, now the commoners are trying this. Look, there's a publicly listed company that's doing this for the Silicon Valley Nouveau Riche upstarts. Oh, no, no, no. Let's make sure that that gets <laughs> shut down while we continue to do it our proper way. I don't know. But again, it's an interesting story, and it does, you know, it does make you wonder, okay, so there's no clinically proven benefit and there's nothing to this, so why why did this company start, and who was their clientele, and how did this, how did this get spread, and what was the idea here, and why do uh, sports uh, athletes, why do they uh, in take blood transfusions as ways of cheating the system and stuff? I mean, again, <laughs> there's some things to ponder there. Maybe there's something to this that they don't want you to investigate too deeply. I'll include the links to the scene of The Simpsons that I'm referencing, and as you actually, you'll see the top comment, the very first comment says, Adrenochrome. James, uh, you and and everybody else you may recall, and I, I actually, I, I when I was going back to do the prep, I had forgotten that we actually did a whole kind of DNA databasing episode. It was the missing Chinese gene editor, scientism claiming a national DNA database would lead to more freedom, and that final story about a company that collects dog DNA at apartment complexes so they'll know who's not scooping the poop. I smell a poo prince follow-up. Dog DNA testing takes off, generates debate. This from the Associated Press. As people peer into DNA for clues to health and heritage, man's best friend is under the microscope, too. Genetic testing for dogs has surged in recent years, fueled by big ag food companies that echo popular at-home tests for humans. You know, the ones that give your DNA to the FBI. Offering a deep dive into a pet's genes with the swab of a canine cheek. More than a million dogs have been tested in a little over 
a decade. The test's rise has stirred debate about standards, interpretations, and limitations. Canine DNA testing for certain conditions and purposes goes back over 20 years, but I guess this all really got kicked off after scientists mapped the full set of dog genes and published all the results back in 2005. Wisdom Health, part of pet care and candy giant Mars Incorporated, and these are the kind of stories I, I talk about on my Food World Order episodes, this sort of morphing of these strange companies together. But yeah, pet care and candy giant Mars Incorporated, they make M&Ms and, and all that kind of junk, launched a breed ID test in 2007, added a health screen option a few years later, and now says they're the ones that tested over a million dogs. But qualms about the dog DNA boom spilled into the prestigious science journal Nature last year. Pet genetics must be reined in, a Boston veterinarian and two other scientists wrote. James, this is one of those kind of strange stories, and it almost makes me think of the sort of the, the fake dog research at the Portland Dog Park. So again, we see this sort of normalizing. I guess I'm just surprised that we didn't do it to the animals before we did it to ourselves, yeah. James. Yeah, you took the words out of my mouth. That is exactly my take on this story, because this brings to my mind the uh, the big Verichip hype that uh, came out about a decade and a half ago. And, uh, you know, you're going to chip your kids because you want to know where they are and whatever. And people, amazingly, were a little bit hesitant to do that kind of thing. So... Um, I, they kind of shifted the propaganda over to, well, no, you chip your pets. And then eventually that becomes chip your kids. And then that becomes chip yourself kind of thing. I mean, that's the way to roll out this propaganda, right? So that's what I'm thinking in regards to this, you know, test your dog's DNA. Find out about your dog. Is it a purebred? How much? And blah, blah, blah. Can, does it have a disease? And da, 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 da. And oh yeah, you can do this to yourself. That would be the way to roll out the propaganda to condition the public, right? But it seems to be, as you say, going the other way around because we're already past this point with regards to people sending in their DNA to the, all these gene heritage sites that, oh, by the way, are cooperating with the law enforcement agencies, the badge wearers. I mean, who would have thought it except anyone with half a brain? And uh, and now we're also finding out that, yeah, you don't need to get the you know genetic material of 100% of the population. You just need a, a, a key percentage of that population and you can map the rest. Scary stuff, but um, as you say, usually they roll it out on the pets first, and then they come for you. But I don't know. This guy seems to be going the other way around. I'll include the flashback link to that story about uh, the apartment managers using this company to sort of track the the offenders. But finally here on New World Next Week, episode 367, we actually kind of talked about just making this final third segment the entire whole episode, a segment we could just pretty much call MSM Death Watch. So first up in the MSM Death Watch, you may have seen this. This started to make the rounds, I think, just only yesterday. And again, everything we mentioned will always be down in the show notes. Laura Logan commits professional suicide. In a recent interview, former longtime CBS News foreign correspondent Laura Logan, I might recall horribly assaulted in that rapey mob in Tahir Square in the fake Arab Spring, critiqued the international liberal media while holding up outlets like Breitbart and Fox as the opposite side of the coin. Logan spoke to retired Navy SEAL Mike Ritland about a variety of topics on his Mike Drop podcast. The discussion featured Laura Logan trashing news, news reports based on single anonymous government sources, calling it an abandonment, abandonment of journalistic standards. That's not journalism. That's horse bleep, she said. Responsibility for fake news begins with us. We bear some responsibility for that, and we're not taking ownership of that or addressing it. We just want to blame it all on somebody else. Towards the end of the interview, Logan seemed to acknowledge that some will see her remarks as controversial, saying this interview is professional suicide for me. James, I got a tweet last week that said you were the cynical one and that I helped kind of balance you out. I actually kind of thought they were referring to me, James, as the cynical one, because in regards to the stories like this, I say things like propagandist in low cut dress stokes right left resentment in interview with retired death squad murderer. Our second entry in the MSM Death Watch, Scott Pelley, says me too, and also commits career suicide, as it seems one of the main objectives in his CBS 60 Minutes story and interview with Andrew McCabe was to paint him as a heroic patriot defending America against the wicked, shape-shifting, all-powerful Russia, which has made Mr. Trump its captive. The 60-minute piece, of course, coincides with the exact release of McCabe's butt-covering book, The Threat, How the FBI Protects America in the Age of Terror and Trump. 
And this original link points out the noting that, you know, real superheroes fight both of those things. Hey, by the way, did you hear an NBC News reported no evidence for Russiagate? Our third and final entry on the MSM Death Watch, Nick Sandman's lawyers filed $250 million lawsuit against the Washington Post, and they might be just getting started. Dateline, Covington, Kentucky. The lawyers for the family of Nicholas Sandman have filed a lawsuit against the Washington Post, seeking $250 million in compensatory and punitive, that is punishment, damages. Sandman is, Nick, is 16 years old. He's the Covington Catholic High School junior at the center of the controversy after his face was depicted across social media along with Native American protester and longtime shyster Nathan Phillips. The lawsuit claims that the Post wrongfully targeted and bullied Nicholas because he was the white Catholic student wearing a red MAGA souvenir cap on a school field trip to the January 18th March for Life in Washington, D.C. The lawsuit adds that the Post engaged in a modern-day form of McCarthyism and will include the links to the, the full lawsuit, actually, that you can go read the whole thing. They actually point out at the beginning, I wasn't familiar with this, they claim that the Washington Post, the CIA's favorite newspaper, actually coined that term, McCarthyism, a modern-day form of McCarthyism. James, I think the Sandman Post kind of has a nice ring to it, eh? It certainly does. Yeah, you're right about that. You turn it over to him. He couldn't do a worse job than Bezos, right? Um, <laughs> democracy dies in darkness, but uh, the MSM dies in lawsuits, hopefully. Uh, one could hope. Uh, I'm not expecting a $250 million uh, judgment, but um, I, I did see in some of the coverage they're pointing out that that's the amount of money that Bezos spent buying up the CIA's favorite newspaper, but they don't talk about the $600 million that he gets from the CIA. Um, in that one contract that we know about, but then there are the other Pentagon contracts. I don't know, whatever. Long story short, the, the richest man in the world, quote unquote, is uh, heavily funded by the CIA and Pentagon and has deep state ties. Who would have thunk it? Um, and is involved in his own scandals with regards to the Inquirer and whatever. I don't know, all that stuff. Um, tabloid stuff. Uh, but it is it is interesting. I saw this confluence of stories, including a couple of different headlines about p journalists committing su professional suicide. So I thought that you know there's there's something in the air with regards to this, and hopefully it's a sign. I just just of the you know testing the wind in 2019. Um, the winds are not blowing favorably on the old dinosaur press, as we already kn knew. Uh, anyone who's watching this already knows that. But it is interesting to see some of these signs. But you put the exact right take on the Laura Logan interview. Um, yeah, she comes out to, pointing out, you know, here's this 60 Minutes reporter pointing out CBS and all these mainstream organizations are totally biased and they're not doing basic journalistic ethics, but Fox and Breitbart are. <laughs> you know, here here's your acceptable range of opinion and news stories, guys. You can go all the way from here to all the way to here. Wow, but don't go out here. <laughs> Whatever you do, don't look at anything beyond that. <laughs> anyway, but it's interesting. Um for at least a couple of reasons I can think of to watch that video. Uh, <laughs> we'll just leave it there. Uh, so, on that note, why don't you wrap things up, James? <laughs> okay, yeah. <laughs> How do I follow that? <laughs> no, I, I often I often say on the shows that we're sort of, we're given our heroes and we're given our villains to sort of cheer and jeer for, and it's all these kind of people on the, on the grand chessboard, James, I think just the sort of little cherry on the top of this as we were putting this all together and i think it goes along in a way with the mainstream media coverage of a lot of things the false flag empire attack pretty much all fully falling apart now where the guy claiming the attack is maybe looking at being charged himself which we pretty much predicted you can kind of guess when it all comes out really full force and they hit a story so hard, it's like, why do they want to shove this story down my throat? It's almost like they have some agenda to push or something. And we'll keep continuing to try and bust that agenda apart as we are now nearly, we're in our 10th calendar year of doing Neural next week, James. This is episode 367. I always like to remind folks at the end of these, I do stream news, music, memes, and more Monday through Friday, 9 to 5 Mountain Time at MediaMonarchy.com slash listen. would love to see you folks join us. Excellent. All right, we'll leave it there. Be back next week. James, thanks for these stories. Thanks, buddy. Take care.